Okay, hello. Today uh, at Elector.labs we have a guest, a special guest from Croatia, Luka Matic. Hello Luka. Hello. Welcome at Elector. Uh, Luka is presenting us his uh, random number generator that he built. Uh, it's a very good random number generator and because it's very good it's also very complex and so he's here to tell us something about it. So Luca, why did you decide to make a random number generator? So about random numbers, they are used everywhere. The, the most important application of random numbers is of course cryptography. Mm -hmm. So secrecy of communication it is much older even than the technology that we are using today. So for a good encryption, you need a good sequence of random numbers. That's just about basic thing about uh, en uh, encryption, no matter what method you want to use. You can use them for scientific research. So before we had electronics, uh, scientists had to use uh, printed books and copy random numbers by hand to do some simulation or something. So uh, there are many ways to different uh, the, to generate different types of random numbers. There is uh, as long as I remember, while uh, I was just a kid, I had a ZX Spectrum Sinclair, and it had some random number function. And of course, these are not truly random, these are pseudo random numbers. But uh, to generate truly random numbers, you need some random process, and this is electronic noise. And uh, you, need to, uh, you, need, uh, you need some processing of that noise to uh, extract uh, random numbers from it and uh, to meet all the requirements of randomness. These are not, uh, this is not as simple as it may seem. So if you just take a piece of paper and somebody tells you, write some random numbers for me, please, they are not going to meet the requirements. Definitely not. You, obviously, every one of us, of us has a preference for some random digit. Mm -hmm. I like uh, number seven more than number nine, for example. So your handwritten sequence will never be truly random. So up until now, we have uh, standards uh, like uh, DIN or NIST or uh, American, European, whatever, that uh, define the quality of random number sequences. So you can find it on the on the NIST.gov governed, I think, website. You will easily find those requirements uh, that are uh, clearly presented. And if your random number sequence meets them, then you're sure that it is truly random. And this random number generator meets the NIST uh, yes, requirements? Yes, there are 15 requirements and uh, it passes all 15 tests. So, and then your generator, it outputs a file on an SD card. Yes, that's right. So here, we have uh, an early prototype, and this one is on perfport, but it, this is actually what we are going to make into real PCB and device. So, this was the early prototype. It wasn't random enough, and it had a boost converter that is uh, that takes too much of the mm. PCB space. Okay. So, this one, is, uh, uh, this one is simplified in a way. It has a few improvements, like an extra analog filter to balance all the frequencies of random numbers, and it has uh, it has uh, out a zero DC offset uh, cancellation to compensate for temperature changes at uh, at the analog voltage comparator, which is needed to extract random bits from analog random noise. Yes, you have to compensate it for temperature because otherwise the long sequence would become not so random anymore after over yes, time. Uh, that's right, because the first and the basic uh, requirement for the randomness is the, uh, about the same amount of one, ones and zeros. You extract ones and zeros, you extract digital bits from electronic noise. And of course, to do that, you need some analog amplifier, actually analog comparator. And as, as we know from basics of electronics, they all have DC drift they, uh, that is affected by many other uh, other external influences and the most important of them is of course temperature yeah. that changes over time. Okay so here is somewhere hidden in these parts there is a random noise, a, a, a diet I suppose that produces yes. the, the, so the noise that is digitized by the uh, processor yeah. Yeah. and filtered and balanced so that it is really random, yes. right? Yes. So. Uh, there are different types of electronic noise. There is short noise, thermal noise, flicker noise, popcorn noise. 
and uh, of course I used avalanche noise. So this is the noise that happens in uh, Zener diodes with breakdown voltage higher than 6 volts. Uh, this noise uh, was chosen because it has many important properties. First, it has a it uh, has a high frequency components which is important. Flicker and popcorn noise don't have them, so you can't use them. Uh, other types of noise like thermal noise or short noise uh, have good frequency uh, characteristics, but uh, the problem is their amplitude is too, too low. You can get uh, an amplitude of about 5 millivolts from a normal, uh, normal easily obtainable 12 volt Zener diode. So this is the first step. Okay. So, uh, electronic noise, it is, and uh, this is a highly random process, but of course, when you put uh, DC bias on the diode, it is affected by many other influences that are not, not so random, like outside temperature or anything else that can happen. But this, but this is why I used two Zener diodes and a differential amplifier, because the basic property of differential amplifier is amplifying the differential sing, uh, signal and rejecting the common mode. So any external influence that has deterministic properties is actually common mode on mm -hmm. both channels. This is, uh, this is suppressed and the difference between two random noises is highly random and this one is amplified. Okay. So, uh, first uh, requirement is to have uh, about the same uh, number of ones and, uh, ones and zeros. This is this is uh, corrected with uh, auto DC offset. This is controlled by a microcontroller who actually counts ones and zeros in sequences and slowly adjusts the DC, uh, the DC offset to balance it. Okay. And also there, there is one analog filter part because uh, further requirements on randomness is to say to have about the same uh, number of different bit patterns and they are highly affected by analog uh, signal by frequency spectrum of analog signal so you have to correct the analog uh, frequency uh, spectrum to balance different 8 bit patterns they should all be about the same frequency in a histogram of uh, of the file recorded on SD card uh, to meet further requirements of randomness. So this can be compared to some kind of a spectrum analyzer and this is connected to the output, uh, this bitstream output from this microcontroller. This is being recorded at SD card and this is analyzed from uh, this. Yeah, so in real time you can see on the display what is happening, how random the numbers are that are going yes, to the SD card. Yes, because we have here, we have a uh, um, four uh, different uh, uh, frequencies that are, each one is one octave higher than the other and when they are balanced then you then you may consider this requirement that it is met and in the upper right corner we have uh, the one to zero ratio that is automatically cancelled uh, this, uh, in, at this very moment the recording is completed so as long as we have about the same numbers on all on all uh, frequencies, on all four characteristic frequencies, uh -huh. and this number uh, about uh, 512. Th that's two by the power of nine. So this, uh, in this case, we can we may consider the analog part well adjusted, and now this uh, file recorded on the SD card is ready for NIST testing. Okay, I can't see it from here. It says 516. 516. It should yeah, be around 512. Yes. Okay. So this is a very random file you have now. Yes. Or a yes. file with r lots of random. And how big is the file? Because I think you can have several sizes. Yes, here, if you can see, all it's uh, on the first prototype. You can see it better. Here is one uh, dip switch with four switches, actually. And you can choose a size between 16 megabyte and 4 gigabyte. Okay. It takes a few hours to create a 4, four gigabyte file. A few hours, yes. right. Yes, more than a few. I think about six or seven, something like oh. this. Uh, Okay, so but then you have world-class random numbers. Yes, that yes. you can use. So this was this was the basic idea behind the whole project. Here we have uh, here we have devices that are created with easily obtainable ubiquitous uh, components, and uh, the output, the, this random number file, actually meets uh, the highest standards that are proposed like uh, standardizing institutes like NIST, GHOST, uh, DIN or, and others. Yeah. Okay, it's very interesting. So today we have presented to you a world-class random number generator that you can use in your projects if you need random numbers. 
Okay, thank you, Luca, for uh, coming, uh, presenting this to us. And um, you can read about it in Elector uh, very soon.